Hello everyone, this is East the Dragon, and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Heroes. In this episode of the Damage Calc series, we'll be taking a look at Damage Reduction and Flat Damage Reduction, which are the last parts of the Damage Calc formula. They also happen to be the most debated and argued sections of the Damage Calc formula, but it's already well known how to correctly calculate damage reduction in every scenario but uh, here's another video <laughs> explaining how to do it correctly so up to this point in the damage calc formula you should have already factored in effective damage the weapon triangle and any associated modifiers such as triangle adept or cancel affinity any modifiers to mitigation, the mitigation stat, like defense tiles or specials like Moonbow or Luna. Boosted damage specials like Bonfire, Iceberg. Damage multiplier specials like Glimmer, Deadeye, Astra. And dealt damage via various forms like Wodel Plus or maybe Giga Excalibur. Moonlight, Bangle, you name it. So, continuing straight off from the previous episode, we were left with 10 damage in our example up to that point. And so here, let's suppose the unit taking the damage has 50% damage reduction, which happens to be the simplest to calc because you multiply by 0.5, and for the method we're going to use in this episode, we are always going to round up. I repeat, we always will round up. So in this case, it's pretty straightforward. The 5 damage just rounds up to 5. <laughs> but in the case of an odd number, like 25, we would round this up to 13. So 25 damage gets reduced to 13 damage after applying 50% damage reduction. And before we get to the actual ridiculous shenanigans, let's just briefly talk about flat damage reduction, which currently is only comes in the form of shield pulse and hardy fighter, as far as I know. So in those cases, I believe at max they both have, give minus five flat damage reduction. So after you factor in your damage reduction, like in our first example here, you would just subtract that 5 damage, and in this case, the unit actually takes 0 damage. And of course, in the scenarios like this one, where the final answer turns out to be negative, it just bumps up to 0, because you can't actually do negative damage in this game, but it does sometimes show up in your calculations. Now for the more difficult part of damage reduction, and that is, where did the 0.5 multiplier come from? Some people mistakenly think that it's from the amount of damage reduction, but it's actually exactly the opposite. It's the amount of damage that's left after applying the damage reduction. Now that sounds familiar, and that's because in a previous episode we were talking about that for weapon triangle disadvantage. It was our second way of computing weapon triangle disadvantage. We also saw it in the episode with uh, modifiers to the mitigation stat when we were proccing specials like Moonbow and reducing the enemy's defense and res by 30% during combat. It was the second method where again we multiply by the corresponding multiplier uh, corresponding to <laughs> the amount of in defense or res in that case was remaining. So a bunch of words, so let's just do some examples here. Let's start off with the simplest case where we only have one form of damage reduction. Let's say Again, let's do 12 damage this time, and let's say we have 30% damage reduction. So from the original 100%, aka the full damage being done, 
The damage reduction reduces it by 30%, so we are left with 70%, meaning our associated multiplier is 0.7, and again, we always round up, so that 8.4 gets rounded up to 9, and so that is our final result. The 12 damage gets reduced to 9 damage after applying 30% damage reduction. So, in general, for calculating damage reduction, the only difficulty is figuring out what this multiplier is. And to do that, we have to go through so a bit of a convoluted process. We're going to do, for each form of damage reduction that, that, we're, that we have to work with, they all combine, com combine, <laughs> combine multiplicatively, aka we multiply them together, it's not additive, so if you have two forms of 50% damage reduction, you don't have 100% damage reduction. It turns out to be a 75% damage reduction. So let's start out with that simple example first. So we're going to first calc out how much of the damage is left, essentially, in terms of a multiplier. So that's, at base, we start with 1, aka 100% of the damage is going to be done. If we have 50% damage reduction, there's going to be 50% of the damage remaining. So we multiply this by 0.5, and then since we have another form of 50% damage reduction, that would also contribute a 0.5 multiplier. So overall, we would be left with 25% of the damage remaining, which means, th and this is the multiplier you would use in your calculations when you're trying to compute the final amount of damage dealt after factoring in the damage reduction. But if you actually want to know how much damage reduction you're getting, you would subtract this multiplier from 1. So overall, combining two 50% damage reduction effects overall gives you 75% damage reduction. Now, let's do a slightly more complex example. Let's say we're goofing around and running four flanes with Caduceus staff in range of a unit. So that unit is getting four forms of 30% damage reduction. So because of that 30% damage reduction, each multiplier is going to be corresponding to 100% minus 30%, AKA 70% of the damage is remaining. So the corresponding multiplier is 0.7, and we do this for each of the forms of damage reduction. And keep in mind, when you get this multiplier here, you actually do want to keep the all the decimal places, if you want to be completely accurate. It's not necessary if there's a ton of decimal places. Uh, for example, if you're working with amounts of damage that's under 1,000 damage, you don't need to keep the last decimal place here, the 1. You can just run with 0 0.240 because based on, how, based on how the math works out, it won't come into play. But if you do get to numbers that large, you do need to factor that in. Because, for example, if we have that 1,000 damage... Um, this goes up to 241 damage, whereas if we only worked with the 0 0.240, we would only get 240. So it would be off by 1 in that instance. So just for general practice, I would recommend you just don't think about rounding any of the decimal places. Don't mess with it. Just take that multiplier and work with it. Uh, only mess around with it if you either don't want to be as don't care about being as accurate or know what you're doing <laughs> so let's do an even more complex example let's where we get some ridiculous decimal places let's say we have two forms of speed based damage reduction but we are not fast enough to get the maximum 40% we all only have enough to get 28% of the damage reduction, aka the unit is only 7 speed faster than the enemy unit. So this 0.2, this 28% damage reduction translates to 
but what's left is actually 1 minus 0.28, which is 0.72. So for each form of damage reduction, it contributes, of the speed-based damage reduction, it contributes that 0.72 multiplier. And to make it more complicated, let's say there's a flame in range as well. So we would multiply it at 0.7. And let's suppose we have a special like sacred cowl which gives 30 percent damage reduction so again uh similar to flame we would contribute a 0.7 multiplier to this equation so overall there is 25.4016 percent of the damage remaining which means just to keep it simple we're going to use parentheses here because order of operations so overall, we get 74.5984% damage reduction, which, again, for the general purposes, you're, in practice, never really going to see damage amounts of a 1,000 or higher, but it is possible. But you can just evaluate this as 74.60% damage reduction and still get the same results um, without too big of a deal uh, but again I, I do recommend that you just don't round just out of habit just to be consistent and just for the fun of it we'll just show a hypothetical scenario of how you could get as much damage reduction as you can and to show why percent based damage reduction has its limitations just for the fun of it. So let's say we have Brave Ike here. Of course, we know on his, thanks to his refine, he can potentially get 80% damage reduction, but you can also combine that with a deflect seal that also, when at tier three, also gives 80% damage reduction. And he could be running a defensive special, like, uh, I guess, Let's do Pavis, Pavice, whatever you want to call it, which gives 50% damage reduction. And let's say he's in range of, I don't know, four flanes. <laughs> because it's ether raids, why not? <laughs> so let's start out with his weapon, Urban. Is that 80% damage reduction for the relevant hit that we're calculating? So that 100% minus 80% is 20%. So he contribute that or Irvine contributes the 0.2 multiplier. The deflect seal contributes another 0.2 multiplier. The Pavis contributes the 0.5 multiplier. And the four flanes give us 4.7s. <laughs> so overall, there's only 0.4802% of the damage remaining which is uh, not a lot of damage remaining, but uh, if we want to calc out the actual amount of, oops, damage reduction or that's being given, we have to do some frenzy action here, but overall we see that Brave Ike has 99.5198% damage reduction, which uh, seems pretty good. But let's say he was taking one damage and wasn't running shield pulse. So if he's taking one damage, uh, we actually have to go back to the previous multiplier because that's the correct multiplier because this is the amount of damage that's left. We just multiply this by one, one damage, to get the same number. But again, from earlier, we mentioned that we're always going to round up. So this rounds back up to one. Which means Brave Ike's massive amount of damage reduction here doesn't actually do anything against one damage. Against two damage at the very least, this rounds up to one, so at least the two damage gets reduced to one. But as you can see, without flat damage reduction, if you don't have 100% damage reduction, which is not theoretically possible right now, um, there is no way to reduce one damage. <laughs> if you're just going to take that one damage. Unless you have something like Shield Pulse. In which case, 
then that one damage can get reduced by five and like again like we mentioned earlier we would just kick that negative four back up to zero and so that's how some units can take zero damage even though the combat preview says you know the unit is going to be doing some amount of damage to them and uh that's pretty much it in terms of actually computing damage reduction and multipliers and whatnot. Once you know how to do it, it's pretty straightforward, but it is pretty confusing because it's unlike many other parts of the damage calc formula, and you typically aren't stacking multipliers as much in other parts of the damage calc formula. So it is confusing, but that's going to be it for this episode. This is currently actually the end of this part of the series where we go through all the mechanics and working through the calculations and actually how to do them using our calculator here as a sample way of doing it. So you can of course do some of this in with mental math and whatnot if you're good at that, but typically the calculator is just nice because it can store numbers indefinitely while you're working on stuff while your brain not so much <laughs> but anyways thanks for watching as always this is ether dragon and hope to see you all next time when we start the next part of our series which is actually doing calcs live bye